Hello Academy, this is code MEC411, day two in the system Inari Prime. I've finally gathered enough resources, and now that I've fixed and fueled my ship, it's time to blow this rock. The Alpha Vector is alarmingly rickety to start, but within moments, the ship's core stabilizes and the serpentine landscapes of Inari Alpha pass beneath my feet. Even though I'd only been here a day and I most definitely did not dawdle and document half the planet's fauna, I feel weirdly attached. The planets come to feel like home, and who knows what toxins and radiations my next stop will bring. I aim the Alpha Vector skywards and push through the atmosphere. This part's always a little frightening. It's fine to lose propulsion on the planet, or even in true space, but in between, Hardware failure is fatal. Oh, and look at that! The light scatter here in Inari Prime is a breathtaking shade of turquoise, attenuated by the isotopes here in space. The asteroid belt holds elongate shaped rocks from the gravitational orbit, but don't let that distract you. These rocks are undoubtedly thamium, which we all need for our pulse boosts. The nearest space station is two hours away at sublight, but not a match for the pulse propulsion of the Alpha Vector. I boosted and immediately feel a royal in my gut. Academy, you would think four years of anti-gravitational training would fix my physiology, but I'm still that green recruit when it comes to hyperspace and boosted propulsions. The first time I sat in a cockpit, I was so sick I threw up in my helmet. And the second time. And the third. But now, I trip out of propulsion, only slightly worse for wear, and then I'm sucked into the pyramidal space station. Judging by the shape of it and the multiple plaques and monoliths I encountered on Inari Alpha, I know this is a Viking ship. I'm afraid, since I was on my way to a Korvac system, I'm a little rusty on Viking niceties. Not that they're a particularly nice race, rather the opposite. They do, however, have a reputation for hospitality towards travelers and a strict code of honor. Ship etiquette suggests that you should always greet the corporal, scout, or admiral in any station first. Not everyone follows space etiquette, but my mother raised me right. And if there's ever a time to mind manners, it's in front of a Viking. I come face to face with Scout Muo, an aphid green Viking woman with a voice as deep as mine after 48 hours of drunken revelry. Heridium? Let's go with that. Ancients? Now isn't that an omen for doom? I don't trust anything older than my grandmother, and she scares the pants off of me. Ancients. Does Scout Muo mean Atlas? The power behind all the slick and modern trade systems and technology. Who or what is Atlas anyway? Who or what were all the researchers sent to meet? Sorry, Academy, I don't mean to doubt you. I'm sure you know perfectly well the risks and uncertainties involved. Becoming a part of Atlas will help in exploring this galaxy and the universes beyond. And, after all, research is our top priority. Before you get too attached to the name Zuhiego Amquenxi, Academy don't. I'm changing that to Inari Theta as soon as I land. Nothing wrong with a Viking name, of course, except I can't pronounce it without spitting, which is considered impolite by most advanced races in the galaxy. The Alpha Vector holds up well, and soon I'm on the beautiful planet of Inari Theta. It's all hot sun and toothed topography here. The sail trees all around grow paper-thin to absorb as little sunlight as possible. 
For a star system with so much green backscattered, the abundance of red on Inari Theta is an anomaly. I suspect much of it is due to this constantly blowing iron sand that obscures the atmosphere. You can still see that faint blanket of green in the sky up above, but the red of the iron bleaches out most of that from the planet's surface. The sand and atmosphere also traps every drop of the nearby sun, making this place incredibly hot during the day. There's very little moisture, so I bet Inari Theta will be quite pleasant in the evening hours. I seek shelter from an outpost on Maxima Lowlands. I've never appreciated air conditioning more than on these planets. Even if powering a little shelter out in the middle of nowhere must be devastatingly inefficient. The Viking male there teaches me just a little more of his language. I'm growing more familiar with their culture, less intimidated by their stoic grunting and their standoffish attitudes. It's quite a change from my first encounters with them, where I shook so much the Viking ambassador thought I had a chronic disability. A low pass over Nari Theta through the sunset reveals continental shelves with a jagged sort of beauty. I can see Inari Alpha on the horizon, still green, with a mantle of light on its side. The transition from day to night on Inari Theta is startling, and the alien landscape is almost unrecognizable by night. I seek shelter in a last alien outpost, hoping to find a friend. Hello, ma'am. Pardon the intrusion. I am Interloper, and you are... Scout Karasam. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Sorry, this is only my second day here, and... Oh, gosh. Oh gosh, is, is she trying to smuggle to me? Ma'am, I am offended. I am an honorable researcher and traveler. I would never accept any of what... Oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want this. I... Oh. oh, all right. I am far too tired to argue. Don't worry, I'll fix this, Academy. And then I'll need some shut-eye in the cool of this station. It's been a long day. Good night, Academy. Until next time. MEC out. <laughs>